I, Amy, we had to record this right now because you were just getting on a roll. Sorry. Before we went and no, it was good. And we were talking about aging. And I want, to, I want you to keep going with that because you were talking about, there's this, this is stigma, right? That people get older and then it, but you're not a sexual being anymore. You're just, you just let go. And fitness, that happens with fitness too, with people as they get older, they start letting go of their vitality and their youthfulness. And they go, that's what happens. You get older and you lose all these things. So I would love for you to keep jumping in about that. Yeah. Yeah, that's a great point. The same is true of fitness and this sort of idea of how dare you have the audacity to want to be old and fit and down in the gym with the kid. And how and also how dare you want to have a nice sex life with your partner or partners or on the apps, whatever you're doing. There's a vibrant dating scene, post-divorce and single old people too. cry more about it. People who are disgusted or angry about that, because if you're lucky, you're going to get old, too. What's the alternative to, to die early? I don't want to know who wants to do that. So you, this disgust or disdain for people who want to do things that are ascribed to the world of, young, of the young needlessly. There's nothing about fitness or sex that needs to be only for the young. That is a, that's a fallacy. And there's, then there's nothing selfish or audacious about wanting to be your best self physically and romantically into your older years if you so choose. We, we're all living over 100 these days, like, hopefully. And fitness is crucial, though. Let's be honest, as we age, physical changes happen. And truly, if you don't get out there, do a little yoga, Pilates, weight training, not only is sex going to be more difficult, but you're not going to feel good, feel confident. None of that's good in the sack. So <laughs> fitness becomes goes from being an option to, I believe, and any trainer will tell you, to being pretty much crucial. In the same way that brushing your teeth and showering, you, you are, you're not going to choose not to if you want to have a good life. It was interesting. I think this is a good discussion because it, they, they do converge together because I don't think a lot of people think about, Amy, about this. What I'm going to say is I think a lot of people lose their sex lives as they get older because they lose their functionality physically. And you have to think about what are the things I'd like to be able to do physically as I age. Write a list down. And one of those things, if you choose so, is maybe have sex regularly in two 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s. But you can't accomplish that if physically you're not have a functional capability to actually do the act of it, whatever version of it. I think that's a big part of it, too. Yeah. If you're, I've spent some of my life doing things they say girls shouldn't, women shouldn't do. And I will tell you, a guy who's got rotator cuff problems isn't building the right muscle cage around with proper training or is using poor form without a trainer injuring it worse he's gonna have a tough time planking and giving it to you <laughs> uh, because he's in agony if you're a woman if you're not flexible enough to adequately give access to your fun parts you're probably not going to reach the finish line and for sure I and mean, when as you age i think it's important to think about how am i going to reach that cup on the top shelf how am I going to do that as I get old? Because in your 20s, no problem. You jump up on the counter, you do whatever you... But, and how am I going to walk down the street and get a cup of coffee with the people that I love and my neighbors? How am I going to live my life so that as physical changes happen, I can, as you said, do all the things I want? And it's a serious issue. It dissolves marriages, lack of intimacy. It, re it results in people thinking that they're not desired and feeling rejected. Be, and that's if you love somebody or even if you're just out there dating, the being able to do some fucking isn't important. Excuse me, bleep that. But no, you say you can say whatever you like. Oh, there's no big deal. You. But I think we have a the point about that thing is we're not talking about that enough. I think we we talk about it from obviously the fun, exciting, exhilarating parts of sex, but we don't talk about it in conjunction with someone's physical fitness and their functional level of fitness. But in, in turning towards that even more, what's your, what's been your motivation to discuss this or your background in, in related to this? Because it sounds like you're very passionate about it. I'm pretty sex positive. My, I'm a kid, I'm a professor's daughter. So he was intellectually curious and, and I am eternally curious about the world around me. I do like to challenge social norms. I fly planes and shoot guns and I'm unmarried and child free and and th there's many ways to be happy. Next life, I'll join the sorority of motherhood. I, I wasn't against it. It's just not how it worked out. 
I, I don't really concern myself with what people think of me or my choices as long as I'm not hurting others, which I've tried very hard not to do and to some degree succeeded. I think norms are nonsense with 8 billion of us. And I've seen as a model and high-end companion, I've seen a lot of, and I've been in modeling, I've been to like billionaire yacht party that turned into an orgy. And I've seen, I have friends who are swingers and they're very happily married or not. There's just, I have friends who are totally monogamous and that's cool too. I've been engaged and in a many year monogamous relationship. And then I've been out there spinning plates safely. Thank God for condoms. And I've uh, dated somebody that was separated and then went back to his wife. So I guess I was a side piece, even though it was an unhappy marriage that he was going to leave. Whatever. They, I've lived a lot of lives and seen a lot of things. And I think that being sex phobic helps no one. I, I think societies that are usually stems from religious extremism, you just get a lot of liars and a lot of misery. And then I've had the privilege of I've dated a couple of people who were considerably older than me. And I've seen people age physical activity, Southern Californians who are in their 80s and still having a great time with their spouse or dating. And then I've seen people who did not take care, ate junk, never worked out. And usually about the late 50s, everything starts getting real bad. They're in pain. We can talk more about if they don't lift weight. There's a lot of data that shows the testosterone drops off a lot faster. So they literally feel more depression and less confidence. There's a hormonal, certainly a hormonal link to strength training and maybe to high intent to hit the... And there's a lot of scientific research being done on this where it's the functional is actually linked a lot to our sex hormones too. And then of course, the mental health thing. I've seen people who are in whose lives are sexless and what that does to their confidence. And then sometimes when their, their fitness life, their sex life improved, how much they love themselves more and how everything else improves. Their business life gets better. They're, there's an old saying, you can't chop down trees if you never sharpen your own axe. That's right. Start getting dull. You're working away. You're accomplishing nothing and you're just getting burnt out. So I live in Manhattan in New York. It's a very hustle work culture. Uh, I used to live in L.A., which was a better culture with respect to fitness. And I think people here would do a little better to sharpen their own axe in fitness because it actually would pay off dividends in the insane work culture that is part of New York City. Some do. Most don't. It's not the best part of New York culture, the putting workouts on the back burner like many do. But as I said earlier, it's no longer a choice when you get old. You're either going to get fit and age well or it's going to get ugly. It definitely can be very ugly and, and really sad. And when people start giving up portions of their life, physical portions of their life that they previously really enjoyed, sex being one of those things. And I, it's interesting. We, I think we try to say, so how do you make things better sexually and all these things? But first part maybe is just taking care of yourself will automatically start to rev that engine up. But I think we do this a lot. We put, you know, the cart before the horse all the time in society. We don't actually look inward first. We always look outward, outward for the other solution versus tackling what's happening to, inside of us or externally with us too. And people want a quick fix. They want, there's a lot of these semi-glutides right now. And I worry about that stuff long-term. We'll, we're going to find out. We will see. Uh, I don't wish, I don't wish harm on anybody, but there's typically not a fast pill for anything good in life, not business success, not love, not fitness. And the reason that's a good thing is because it's in the doing that you become better. It's in the meeting the challenge, right? When you're buried as a seed and you're going to grow, you're in the dark and you're going, what the hell? Your first few days in the gym where you're like, this doesn't feel good. I feel embarrassed. That guy's fitter than me. But it's in the doing that you become a better person. And then you look back and go, yeah, I did that thing. Like, I am that badass person. And so happiness doesn't come from looking to external things to solve your problem. Happiness comes from meeting challenges. And fitness is one of the best ones. And certainly for your love life, a lot of partners, when they see their loved one take better care of themselves and love themselves, they're inspired to do. Many couples like to work out together or not. You just go to the gym, different floors, meet afterwards, <laughs> all sweaty and glowing. It's great for sex. You can take a shower together afterward. Um, but it inspires others, and it certainly, the other payoff is that you look better naked, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. Definitely not a bad thing. And it's funny you mentioned that, yeah. It's really, I just did a presentation 
where this company, and it was on self-care as a gift to others. And it says, often we look at it as this is something we're doing for ourselves. So if I take care of myself, whatever it's mentally, physically, socially, emotionally, spiritually, whatever. But you mentioned the thing, the confidence part. And I always promote that as, as it's the greatest, it's the greatest two for one. Because when you take care of yourself, someone else gains confidence in your ability to take care of them or be there for them in whatever form or function that is within that relationship. So you're actually, other people are getting inspired by your desire to better yourself. And you can even make that claim sexually as well. You taking care of yourself makes the other person feel like, wow, they're very, there's a vivaciousness, a vitality to this person that's attractive. You become more attractive to other people by taking care of yourself too. For sure. The, of the sex that I've had so far in my adult life, athletes are among the most fun. For obvious reasons, they can they don't get tired as quick. They got a cardio stamina. They have flexibility often. Muscles look pretty. We all like shape. Most people do. Pretty. Their blood flow is healthier, so the skin is glowier. If their diet is in check and they're eating their fruits and vegetables, beta carotene makes your skin prettier, your hair grow, your nails grow. And the thing is, to your point, they like themselves. They like them feel good in the sack and in the bedroom. And that's infectious, right? Confidence is infectious. And so that reads fun in the bedroom. And so it's not just the general health of the system, although that's a huge one. It is that self-love that is attractive to be around. Yeah. And you just, you feel it from people when they feel that way about themselves. It's always comes out back to that confidence, right? Someone who's confident, who's outgoing, they believe in themselves. Other people find that attractive and other people, whether it's romantically, friendship-wise, work-wise, people like to be around confident people. And one of the most, uh, I once fucked a yoga champion. She's lovely. She lives wow. overseas. And the fact that she was so fit and so flexible was not the worst. So, yeah, there's the obvious reason, too. It's a handy thing to be strong and bendy. Yeah. yeah. And then that goes to like in fitness right now in the industry, there's a big movement towards mobility and stability work, which was not the case not that long ago. But now it's very like mobility for function to be able to get up and down from the ground, basic standard of living type activities. And that's how we build it as daily activities of living. Like you mentioned, reaching for something. But I, I, one of the reasons I wanted to do this interview too is just like, to discuss an area that we should be very open-minded about, which is the mobility for the sexual experience. And well, as you just mentioned with yoga, but when you lose your mobility, you lose a good portion of your physical life. And this is, I think, what happens for a lot of people. They lose a lot of their, not only at recreational things they like to do, but things that they enjoy to do sexually. They start yeah. losing that too once that mobility starts to fall apart. Yeah, how are you, your husband going to pin you on your back with your legs above his shoulders if your hamstrings are, if you never stroke your hamstrings? How are you going to, how are you going to squat and ride your husband if your quads crap out after 20 seconds? Sorry, vulgar, but it's true. We're all. No, oh, I like it. The keys, please oh, keep I'm it that way. It. And like missionaries lit, don't get me wrong, but there's other stuff. And if you're in a long-term relationship or even if you aren't, it is fun to do different things. If you have the same partner. You do want to keep it spicy. So as lit as missionary is, and we all love it, it's nice to add some other stuff to the mix now and then. I, as a woman in her 40s, in probably a decade-ish, I'm entering menopause. And we know now that exercise really helps manage the symptoms of menopause in, in aging women. And we need to talk more honestly about menopause. There's some data that shows that it's a major reason for divorce. The walls of the vagina get thin without some estrogen supplementation. Testosterone from weightlifting can help you with the hormonal part of menopause because higher testosterone in women also helps with the sex drive. It's not just men, people. Sure. But sex can get painful. And if you don't mitigate the symptoms of menopause, affairs happen, divorces happen. We need to get honest as a society about menopause because we're living long enough to pretty much all make it through this. And some people are managing it beautifully and others are ending up with their main relationship falling apart 
when it need not be that way. Yeah. You mentioned about living longer, which I think is a good time to kind of transition into that is now we're at a stage in humanity where humans are living longer and it's very noticeable in a sense of how we look as we live longer. Like you're in your forties, I'm in my forties. I've just turned 46 last month. Oh my God, and... you're so good. <laughs> Thank you. And... And we start the game strong and we hit the wall real hard. <laughs> Well, the thing is, I remember growing up, somebody that was my age now did not, they looked much older. That's and right. you're starting to see the whole 40s, the new 20s, 60s, whatever. That's really starting to play out. So now you're going to have this group of humans who are looking younger, are more vital, by, have more vitality, have more functionality. What is life like when people are now older, but have this different functional capacity. And, and that's a good discussion about sex and longevity. Sure. And there's Easily in Los Angeles, there were men in their late 60s that would turn every head in a restaurant. Yeah. Hot yeah. and not young. And they weren't trying to look young. They were just hot. They surf all day. They're, they got some age lines in gray, but it looks good. It looks and good. It, that's the oh, point. Yeah. yeah, they're not trying. I don't like the trying look, but eh, it's too much. You're not fooling anybody. We all pretty much look our age within five to 10 years, but you can look hot. And yes, to your point, we have a graying population, right? We're not having a ton of babies. Like most developing society, it goes from an age pyramid to an age column. Yes. And so the entire society is going to have a lot more businesses and a lot more considerations for the grayer population. You're seeing more assisted living facilities. You're seeing changes in the retirement benefit structure in most of the developed world because the median age, I think in America, I'm probably going to get this wrong, but I think it's 39 now is the median. Okay. Don't quote me. We all have Google. Whatever it is, yeah. it's older. Than you, it, anyway, it's older than it used to be. And that is true in all of the first world because we don't have, when children become very expensive and they're not an asset, they're a liability, we have fewer babies, all that. And so, yes, if we're all going to make it to 120, then we do have to talk about what is life like. We're not just going to be like throwaway people waiting to die for half our lives. That's nonsense. Yeah. Yeah. And this picture of, this is a very kind of 1950s, 60s picture of the two people just sit in a chair opposite each other and they just watch TV and you just fade into this end of life. And I think you're going to just see a more vivacious, more outgoing, more adventuresome group of people as people live longer. So what does that mean? And what does sex mean? when you're living much longer, how does that become a part of, continue to be a part of your life? Especially if you're living longer and you're taking care of yourself, you also have so much wisdom now as well. You know what your likes and dislikes are sexually. You have an understanding of your own body better. How does that go as you continue to get older? That's really interesting stuff. When exercise is an excellent way to mitigate some of sexual dysfunction, for instance, Men, if they live long enough, they are all going to get prostate cancer. However, if you catch it stage one or two, it's pretty much an, it's not a big deal at all. It's a minor procedure outpatient these days, and it is not going to cost you your life. If you get your checkups, everybody get your checkups. If you don't catch it too late, it, it's going to end you, but that's a stupid reason to die. You don't need to. If you're recovering from like a radical prostatectomy, there's going to be a period of time where you're probably not going to get a chub as easily. Then you might need some Cialis or Viagra or a pump or they have injectables now. Sounds weird, but saves marriages. Um, it's a 20-gauge little diabetic needle. And hey, when you want to make love to somebody and you can't, you'll pretty much do anything. I've seen it. And exercise, blood flow after surgery with scar tissue, they know it's very helpful for recovery. And so given that if all these men are going to make it into their hundreds, this is going to be pretty much a chapter that men go through. And then they'll deal with it and then they'll be fine. The, con the lack of confidence and feeling like you lost your manhood, which is not true, but it feels like that. Exercise and putting some muscle on and feeling good can really mitigate the psychological effects of acknowledging aging and the physical stuff. It's a plumbing system. You got to get them get them <laughs> flowing through the pipes, right? It is a plumbing system. No doubt about it. And we have to get over this psychological hurdle of that when someone ages... They check off these boxes of, I stopped doing this. Now I don't do this anymore. And th this is a socialization that we've been fed about how we age and how things just fall apart. 
And sure, as you age, different systems of the body, listen, it's a ticking clock moving down. It's a, it's, listen, the ball is dropping slowly over time. It's, why not oh, rage against that the dying? Quite a bit. And why not rage against the dying of the light? What alternative do you have? Why not? I am, and I don't care if people don't like it. It's my life and my body. I'm not just going to give in. Why would yeah. you? They... I think also, yeah, after surgery, you can get creative. I know older people who explore kink and other ways of maybe, yeah. Example, you're, rec you're recovering from said rotator cuff surgery because joints wear out and we got to fix them now, but we do. And meanwhile, you've got hands, you've got a tongue, you've got other parts. And to your point, what you said, now you have the wisdom to know what really works. You're not 20 anymore. And so there's a lot you can do erotically, even when women... Let's be honest about childbirth. When women deliver vaginally, they there's and and you get an episiotomy, you're stitched up and in ice diapers for a long time, so to speak. So you got to figure out other ways until things heal, which they do. And the body's amazing. But and a, to your point of what you're doing on this podcast, let's just be honest about it because playing ostrich is is stupid and har and actually harmful. Yeah, I. The whole basis of my podcast is like exploring common topics, but from a different point of view. It's I could talk about fitness and just the basics, it's whatever, it's fine. But everyone's talking about that. But I don't know a lot of my colleagues that are willing to have a conversation about fitness and sexual function. And it's, but they're related dramatically to me. It's but it's also the programming we've had about our socialization, about this stigma around talking about sex, which is what annoys me about online stuff for like sometimes YouTube and these places where they're just like, oh, you're going to talk about sex. I'm going to take this episode off of your. That's ridiculous. What are you talking about? Like this discussion is in no way pornographic. There's a difference between discussing sex from a therapeutic, yeah. full psychological advice column perspective and gonzo porn. With, yeah. And look, there's a place for porn. I sometimes watch it. Not that much, but like. It's, yeah. I, I'm not anti-porn either, but demonetizing people who are giving sexual advice and offering help, I think it's wrong of the channels that do it because that is not the same thing as porn, right? No, it's definitely not. It's, there's lots of good information that people need. This discussion is a good informative discussion about linking your functional physical health to your sex life. That should never be something that should be looked at as this is weird content or inappropriate content. People who are really uncomfortable with sex, and I've met many, the shame can come from, it's usually stuff that's drilled into you when you're little, either by parents or religion or both. Yeah. It's also can be a lack of confidence. And again, knowledge can help that. And usually, or it's a, some people are worried about a loss of control. If I'm sex positive and honest about sex, I'm going to become some sort of heathen who's going to go out and nonstop fuck the whole neighborhood, which is a very weird premise because that's, that's not so strange, by the way. This person, you just get this picture in your mind of somebody who's just, they can't control themselves and they're just going everywhere. It's a fine fantasy because also other people have consent. So good luck with that. Yes. But everything can become addictive. And look, exercise can become addictive. Of course. Food, gambling, church. I used to bite my nails as a kid. What is that? Yeah. But it was a So... I think it behooves people to have some accountability to learn about sex, to be a better partner, a better lover, and to not worry that. And uh, yeah, we're preaching. I'm preaching the choir here, but sex is literally something everyone's doing, and we're weird about it. I it know. has a place. Look, it makes people. If you don't use birth control, and that is important, but and it can have magical, almost spiritual. You ever make love to somebody you're deeply in love with? It's it's something maybe from God or the ether or whatever, but it isn't always like that. Some people fuck for fun. Sometimes they fuck for boredom and loneliness. Sometimes they fuck for money. They, and as long as there's consent and nobody's being abusive, people have different reasons for having sex and, and it is not for us to judge, right? Totally agree. I've been- oh, You had to. Yeah, <laughs> next month will be 20 years I've been married to my wife and she's a wonderful person. And I honestly can say this, and we, we've talked about this because I said, we need to be very open what we like, we don't like. And I think our sex life has been better the last five years than the first 15. 
it has been this is something about knowing someone a long time and the physical part is obviously great but it's just there's something else there that you don't get that it becomes the extra layer yeah. that well, is really yeah it's beautiful it honestly is really beautiful yeah. But if you don't have love, you still have the right to have a sex life. Single people do. No doubt about it. I've met friends who go through a divorce and for a, for a couple of years, sometimes they're like, look, I don't want to get too deep again. I'm still healing. But I have a right to have a love life or a sex life during that with as long as I'm not lying to other people, promising things I don't want. The key is always consent. And with your wife, your stuff that you guys into can evolve. That's wonderful if you've been together for decades. My My sister and her husband have also been quarter century in and they tried some freaky stuff and it, yeah, cool. I don't Great. always know too much because it's my sister, but it keeps it spicy. And some, she has some very funny stories that sometimes it's been a fail where he's been like, no, I'm good. Yeah. yeah. But sometimes it's been really interesting to explore kink, to ex toys. There's so much that you can do. And it's a little private world where we get to play. Adults, we don't get a lot of play anymore. Right. It's I was just watching this documentary called Bratz. It was about the Brat Pack. Okay. And Andrew oh, McCarthy. Right. Yeah. It's totally our time period, right? You're thing. gonna look old enough to know, but I'm swear I am my age. And I mm -hmm. love the line in Breakfast Club when Ali Sheedy goes, When you become an adult, your heart dies. And something there's something about that resonated with me. It's this process of when you grow up, the world when getting exposed to everything where it starts to change you. And this wild youthfulness sometimes starts leaving people. Yeah. And you need to capture that on a regular basis because you're still an exciting, fun person. But we just like start and falling it's apart. You can fall youthful. It needn't be the bastion of the young. We Correct. Was we can decide differently. We can decide differently. We just, we're fighting this incredible socialized programming about sexuality and our physical fitness and it's just this person's 50 it's over i'm like who said that just because we're mortal we're not coral that buds off a new branch we're, we're yeah a, yeah we die that's that sucks i'll let you know what the next adventure is when i get there i'll come you and let you know if i find out but just because we're mortal i the senescence i used to after undergrad my undergraduate degree was in molecular biology and for two years i worked in biotech in north of san francisco and we worked on diseases of aging. I worked on SOD2 knockouts and free oxygen radical stuff. There is a very clear link between the getting your blood flow up and diseases like Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. It's like you get clogs in the plumbing. They're, they're called tau protein neurofibrillary yes. tank. Yeah. And you know what clears that shit out the best? Exercise. It's better than the pills they have for Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. It's better than surgeries exercise for it's not just your muscles and your sex it's your brain which i would argue is also useful for sex because that's what helps you think of fun stuff to do in bed yeah most definitely and then you have the build up of beta amyloid in the brain which is also <laughs> cleared by that and also with having really solid sleep hygiene as well and all these things but it's i think we yeah, just we've been fed we've been fed we've been fed something this is not conspiratorial it's just the truth we've been fed a lie about our bodies and how by how our vitality of our bodies and how sexual we can be. We've been fed something by previous generations who were prisoners of their time in a way too. So I understand that, but we have to make the change and we shouldn't be have this shame associated with how we express our bodies and everyone feels differently about how they like to engage sexually. As long as it's not hurting other people, why would you care so much yeah. about it? Yeah, as a model who did, who I did my last Playboy cover at, I'm 47 now. I did my last Playboy cover at 40, 45. And uh, I get told on the internet by young people usually is, hang it up, grandma, which is, I'm, I'm not a grandma, but okay. Um, uh, uh, they, I don't know why they're so angry. And I think there is, to my point in the beginning, there's a thing that we get mad about of the audacity of a person who dares uh, and i think that probably comes from envy is i wish i would dare and i don't so you shouldn't it's fear which is fear is a derivative of health and to, the disinfectant to fear is truth fiat lux right let there be light 
when you shine a light, and that's what podcasts do, that's what interviews do, we are showing the way 8 billion people live. And the internet's been great for that. Internet's not problem free, but it's been great for showing that you don't have to do the norms because they're actually not always norms. It's a lie. And yeah. when young people are angry at somebody over 40 who still did Playboy and yes, still has sex and is okay with it, I think they are scared. One even told me once a podcast host, he said, we're all scared of death. I said, yeah, sure. Okay. It's a big unknown. That's true. But being ageist is not going to help you be immortal. It will not. You will get there too, my friend. And yeah. so to me, it's I'm, I'm going to be fit and I'm going to enjoy my body because it's short, because we're mortal, and because I have no choice. Yeah. And I just like highlighting these different corners of life because I just don't like when people hide stuff. I've had some really great interviews with people who are working in the sex industry and they're very open about it. And I'm like, oh, I want you to tell your story to me because I feel like it's a responsibility of people, especially I consider I've had a really good life. I've been very successful and I don't think people would ex look at me and think, oh, well, he's really into all this stuff. That's the point. I want you to realize that you could be very successful, be very stable and still want to talk about all these topics and participate in different things. Because you know, it's the whole thing of if somebody is like you say, high in companionship work, whatever, they think the, the worst of you. They think oh, you're in an alley trolling for people. They think the literal worst. I mean, that's it's nothing it's people a day. Yeah. But and, what if I were, honestly, there's people doing right. that. Probably not every day. Ouch. But yeah, the part you look very innocent and people, there's the halo effect, right? It's yeah, from a yeah. military of your former life. Yeah. People judge what they look. I look sexy. So people, when I told, when people find out I'm, I have been a high end companion on and off, they're not always surprised. <laughs> I kind of look like one and I act like one. And I'm not sorry. I got outed. I would have loved to have kept lying to my family because they, they don't enjoy the shame and stigma and the fear of what might happen to me because they still don't understand it. And they just don't want to talk about it. But they love me. I'm grateful for that. Yeah. I would have preferred to not get outed. Now I got nothing to lose. I got outed. It is yeah. what it is. I have to live. I'm here. I got to live. There's millions of us. We are your neighbors. We're in your yoga class. No We're doubt just... about it. And I, yeah, it's just dating. It's just dating. Totally. I have a great story about this. Is I this lady from Canada, and she calls herself. This is her own name, the pesky prostitute. And she's great. She went by a different name on it and stuff. Which I was like, great, whatever worked for you. And she was like, the funniest thing. All these people complain about it. The people who come to see me are the parents in your neighborhood, the doctors, lawyers, judges. You, seriously, all these people who are against it are the ones coming to see people like me. And yeah, that's most the of hypocrisy. My, I, most of my uh, well, Canadians are lucky to have more rights than we do. Right. I'm, we're doing work to try to, because even if, look, even people, even if you hate the sex industry, these are typically, most are younger than me and they're poor. And you, if you shouldn't think that these people should suffer and die, they're still human beings and they have a different chapter. These become mothers, wives, lawyers. Like I know hundreds of retired companions doing all sorts of other things. People have chapters in their lives. They change. And if you think they should all just die, then I don't know how to talk to you. But I don't think most people think that. So even if you hate it, there's work to be done in the space of harm reduction. And we can do better in America. They're doing better in Canada, New Zealand, Australia. There's models of societies that deal with it better, even though it's problematic. And that's another episode, but because that's a huge topic. But yeah, she talks about, unfortunately, and I'll say unfortunately, I'm going to get some hate for this on YouTube, but most of my clients have been older, white, conservative, Republican and I have had some very angry discussions over wine with them about the way that they vote versus the way that they privately live. And they're usually sheepish and they go, I don't agree on that stuff, but I agree on the other stuff. OK, fine. But it's not great that they vote in a way that's hypocrisy, that they do not live. And they are lying and in the closet because they reap the benefit of pretending to be somebody that they aren't. And I totally understand that we all wear masks because I don't run down the street and tell strangers because not everybody wants to hear it and it would probably harm me. And sometimes when people find out and then don't like me, that's a hassle, honestly. 
So I understand why they lie, but the fact that they vote to harm the very people whose labor they're consuming will never not anger me. I don't and, know how they, it wouldn't anger you. That's just the total hypocrisy. And they right know it. There. Yeah. Some, some have said, I can't. I'm a married guy who runs three companies. I'm supposed to get into sex work activism and say, I love hookers. <laughs> they, that would be awesome, but they cannot. And it wouldn't help if they're in some state that's totally against them. Yeah. I, it's, but there's, well, anyway, there's work being done in the space and I hope for more harm reduction someday. I don't know which way it's going to go because there's people that are aggressively, they think people like me, somebody likened me to a drug dealer oh, that okay. sex in men's lives and therefore you're dealing and yeah, he's a crazy person, right? Right. Ruins also, their lives? Yeah. If you could outlaw sex workers, do they think that would just make everybody be ag aggressively monogamous if this is apparently what they want? Because by the way, they could fuck other people. There's neighbors, there's coworkers, right? I Assuming most of the sort of infidelity and nonsense out there is not sex workers. It's probably co-workers and neighbors, I suspect. For I sure. Well, not I don't know. Them. Why? I don't know. Yeah. And of course, they're not going to say it. And it's, but it, they, it's so interesting. You don't know what goes on in your neighborhood or wherever and what's happening behind closed doors. As most people are, they're playing a character. They want that main character energy. Here's is what I'm in this movie, my own personal movie. And I'm the main character. And really, I'm playing someone else. Because what if you knew who I actually was? They, and... they... Yeah, why are there so many swingers on Long Island? What's going on in Montauk, Fire Island? I think they're just rich and bored because there's a lot of swingers out there. And they're all very respectable, rich. I guess they maybe have too much spare time. I don't know. It's cool. Whatever. I don't know. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, to, to allow the government to hunt and persecute the people whose labor you enjoy is shitty. But on the other hand, every time I go buy a piece of fish, I don't know necessarily that animal was treated well. And I try not to participate in factory farm animals, but I'm sure I do sometimes. Your clothing, I don't know. I of do the course. best. Yeah. Fast fashion or. All that. Yeah. There's Your trainer might hate their job and hate you. And you're just standing there with your money trying to get in shape. Being a consumer that's 100% ethical is probably impossible. And yeah, life's on a level playing field. I've seen men that were disabled and not really able to get their needs met on the dating market. I've met people who are single. Most of my clients were not married dudes. They're single and they're busy and they don't want to date regularly. I've met people who it was a dry run for getting back out there with a woman that there's no pressure, right? Life is not a playing field. A PTSD veteran who has human needs for touch and affection, should he be alone and lonely and have nobody? Should he be able to hire somebody if he so chooses, who he's not hurting and who consented? And then the overarching issue is that it's my body. The state does, and or some church or temple or mosque does not own my body. I do. And I fuck who I want, when I want, for the reasons that I want, as long as they're, as I'm, as they're consenting as well. And no government's going to tell me that I can't because I own this. So, That's exactly right. Yeah. I, I never saw the problem with any of this stuff. I was just like, okay, as long as there's not something that's really harmful, hurtful, violent, really causing a destruction of their life. There is. Uh, and it, sometimes it happens, but there's, if there's consent and someone wants to be more aggressive with someone else, they have consent for it. Do yeah. your thing. Do your thing. But be, I like people to be open. About. That's the thing. I, I watched that Ashley Madison documentary that recently came out. Did you watch that? What did oh, you yeah. think of that, by the way? That guy was an attention addict. The, yeah. But, and then, yeah, of course, there's lots of cheaters. People like to fuck other people. So, yeah. Then the guy, Noel, the owner, is a shady little character. Yeah, uh, definitely a shady guy. That's yeah. his original problem. He did protect his <laughs> privacy well enough. And he liked promotion so much he was willing to do anything for promotion and as not Literally. all marketing marketing yeah you can't be a jerk and he's a jerk we yeah. call this cop, right yeah he was a, ma a massive jerk and then when all the information came out he was just as dirty as anybody else man like it's not a great i like is that they showed the one guy and the lady who they had talked about it they were open with each other hey i would i have other needs and so i want to meet those with other people and so they had an open, and I, for me personally, I feel like if that's what you're going to, don't hurt the other person. 
Like, just be open to them and say, this is what I want. And they had an agreement. What, yes, what, what's happening on the other stuff, there was no agreement on the other stuff. There was no say, agreement. And there's a lot of times, cheaters, the problem is the lie, not the sex. I know the owner of an agency called Cowboys for Angels. It's, they did a show called Gigolos that went a few seasons yeah. funny. Yeah. And they serve a lot of couples who the man likes to watch his wife with another man. He finds it exciting and fun and maybe a safe way to experience feelings of jealousy because this gigolo is not going to try to break up your marriage. And your wife's not going to leave you to some 23-year-old dude who is she's not in love with. So all things exist. That particular fetish exists. You talk about rough and consent. This is why we have safe words. This is why you yell pineapple if they're choking you too hard. If you can yell. <laughs> yeah, who doesn't like a little hair pulling? Nobody, what they say, there's nothing worse than a polite fuck. That can be true. Sometimes you want to be manhandled as a woman. It happens in a safe right. way. Safe I have a girlfriend way. with a rape fantasy and she and her husband pretend. And I don't know if she's exercising some past trauma or what it is, but it's a thing, right? All things exist. Yeah. And that was my whole thing with that documentary, which was interesting. It was like, basically most of it was lack of consent in the relationships. And so hurt was, these were all done in private, in secret. And the other person just didn't know. That's hurtful. You know, then, then, you're, then it becomes, or then it blows up your life completely for people. Whereas the one couple, they were just like, hey, this is what we're doing. They had an agreement. And I don't know that anyone should think that's a bad thing. That's, they came to an agreement. They agreed upon it. It's their set rules for it. You know? Sometimes, so I've met couples where the wife is clearly not super pleased. Like, all day she made her husband go buy her Chanel purses and then we go out to dinner. And she's a little, it's happened a couple, a few times where she's a little snarky with me, which is odd because I'm not trying to be a threat. And my focus was usually on her for a while. And then usually by that time she was fine. And once they realize it's not a threat, they're usually a lot less worried. So in terms of consent, I think I have seen where it's his birthday present and she's doing it for him and a little bit angry. I You worry about that because it's consent, but it's not. However, in any long-term relationship, there's compersion. You do a lot of things for the other person that you may not particularly love doing. And I don't think it always borders on abuse, right? There's a, I think it's case by case. and it's a lot of case by case. And I think that, I think we're, I'm, my hope is, I have hope that conversations like this, and I'm sure you have with other people and you being open will loosen the tightness around these conversations. It's really not that huge of a thing to me. I'm like, all right, we're all here because of this. <laughs> we all got here because your mom took loads. Relax. You're welcome, people. Did everybody just hate that comment? I'm so sorry, people. That's so good. That's very okay. quotable, you know that, Amy? <laughs> so we're going to delete that thought out of our head, folks. <laughs> mom is a nice lady. But your mom likes it, too. She's freaky, man. You know what I mean? <laughs> We were little. We found pictures, boudoir style pictures my dad had taken of my mom when they were first married. And she was so lovely and young. And she was horrified. She's give me those. I was like, they were in love and, and very full of lust. It was beautiful. I'm glad they were, like you said. I think, but for real, stay fit, people. Lift weights. It helps with your hormones. Do yoga. It helps with your flexibility. Get a trainer so you don't hurt yourself. You're middle aged, you got cash. Stop spending it on other stuff. Spend it in the right ways. You don't need a new like car. Right. Get a trainer. Get buy a new car every five years. It no no investment in your health is ever a bad investment. You will never regret it. Most and definitely, Amy. I, used to I like how you talk. You have a I'm, great. You're just straightforward. You're like hey, it is what it is, and it makes a lot of sense. Man, actually, this was inspiring. Very fun. I Thanks for holding this space. It's such an honor to meet you. I'm such a fan, trainer of the year. You're just a rock star. Keep it up. Thank you so much. And uh, I'm sure after this, more people want to check out what you're up to. So please share outside of this how people can learn more about you. Yeah. And if um, I'm a chatty lady, if you want to say hi, I'm, I'm Amy Taylor NYC on almost all the socials. You'll find me. Awesome. Amy, thank you so much. I really appreciate the time. It was super fun.